Greetings, welcome back to Elite Talks. Today I'm gonna be joined with Jackie Ina, a beauty influencer turned mogul. She is truly a trailblazer in the influencer space and her and I also share the love for an espresso martini together. Can you believe that? Someone who loves an espresso martini just as much, if not more, than I do. And today we're shooting on National Espresso Martini Day. I didn't even know that was a thing until today. Um, so because of that, why not make an espresso martini as we welcome Jackie Ina to Elite Talks? Alrighty, let's get this episode of Elite Talks going. Alrighty, now that we've made our espresso <laughs> martinis, okay, let's do another cheers here. Yes. We've kind of already like drank them up. It is it's super strong too. So you're gonna be like- Did you put Henny in yours? Not this time. I did, um. Is this what you do to all your guests? You give them Henny and no, 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 no. But now that we have our drinks and we're sitting down. Yes. I really wanna like get into a lot today. Okay. I wanna learn a lot about getting down to business, mm -hmm. what that means to you. I wanna like really know more about your journey into the influencer world. I have been watching you and so many others have been watching you for years. And I wasn't even in the makeup space, but I used to love when I was younger just watching people do makeup online. Really? Yes. Why I is don't, that? I don't know. It's just so interesting to me. I mm -hmm. know you mentioned that you were in Hawaii. Yeah, when I started my channel. Yeah. I lived in Hawaii. Okay. And at the time I was in the military. Mm -hmm. So I had like a whole completely different life. Right. I was married, I was living in Hawaii, I was in the military, I was in the reserves. So that basically just means like you're part time. Mm -hmm. So I had like a lot of free time to like work and you know, do other things outside of like serving. And I was just going through like a, a lot professionally, personally, and this was like before the word influencer was, even existed. Right. Like that was not a thing. That was not like, I don't even know what you would even call that back then. Yeah. Like no one really used the I phrase content creator either. It was just like, we just on camera here for vibes. Right. <laughs> and so literally, so then what I was doing at the time, cause this is 2009, child depressed going through it, like m literally miserable. Mm. But like, I loved makeup. Like this was like when I was like in the, of the makeup era like and those were the years where I was like really experimenting with makeup right so my friend kept telling me everything that you do offline you should start a YouTube channel like right. you should you know you should share those looks and stuff and teach people like what you do like people want to learn that and one thing about me I'm a Leo and I think people automatically expect me to be like I'm yeah. here in front of the camera but I was the exact opposite I was like not interested also I was a working makeup artist at the time mm -hmm. and at that time people like Mario Denevanovic Sam Fine you wouldn't see them you knew who they were if you mm -hmm. were in the industry but like the makeup artist to me at least at that time you were like your work was seen like you were not at the forefront see, of right work. you weren't really like the talent like you were the artist right so like at that time I was just like oh, I'm not really interested or whatever my best friend was like Uploading YouTube, uploading YouTube, uploading YouTube. And she would tell me for months. Finally, I was like, okay, well, I guess like I don't really have anything else going on in my life right now. <laughs> I was like, I could use a creative outlet. So I uploaded a tutorial mm -hmm. and she said it was whack. And I was like, <laughs> okay, fine. I won't do a picture slideshow. This was like when people used to do like picture slideshows. Okay. Oh. It was a hot mess. <laughs> it wasn't even a video. It Wait, was like, are you, the flipograms? <laughs> was it like those? I remember that flipogram era. So my friend was like, no, I want to see you like talk, like hello. So I was like, fine. But that was a whole learning curve too. Cause I was like, I'm talking to myself. This is yeah. weird. It was really the first, I would say like year it was weird. Online at the time, you were in Hawaii. Did you have and have friends in Hawaii with you, or were you by, completely isolated and alone? No, I, no. Well, I was I was married at the time, right. and the relationship wasn't obviously I'm not, I'm not married anymore, and so that was a huge part of like why I needed that creative outlet. But mm -hmm. in addition to that, I didn't have a lot of friends like working 
at Mac at the time. I worked at Mac as well. Right. At the time, Mac girls didn't really have the best reputation for being like super warm and friendly. Really? The girls that worked at Mac were known to be like, really rude. Like you would mm. always hear these stories of people being like, I went to go buy a lipstick and I went home crying. Cause they were just like, I don't know, I guess they were just like, ooh. Yeah. If you, if the face wasn't snatched or if the face wasn't beat, they was not trying not. to give you the time of day. Mm. It's not that all the people that I worked with were like that. They absolutely weren't. Like some of the girls that I worked with were lovely, very sweet. Um, management was amazing. However, cause I wasn't really fitting in with the like RBF, like super like, no, I work at Mac. And I was uh -huh. just like smiling at people when they came in. Uh, and people were like. It wasn't like mean girl energy. No, I was the exact, I, like opposite. I didn't, I wasn't on code, code. I guess. Yeah. So they interpreted that as like, you're saying hi to everyone. Like you're not giving the rest of us oh, no. a fair shot to get clients. Cause yeah. you know, like this was like a commission based Please. job. Okay. So, but I was like, I just. This is just who I, I just am. Smiled. Just being myself. Like, so I'm. <laughs> Being punished for, for being, being friendly. That's like, insane. So it was it was a lot. Like work life was hard, home life was hard. And I just feel like YouTube was like the only thing only that made thing me that feel was... like, it was like my refuge, I guess, you know? You know, that's it's interesting you say that because when I think of like my journey starting as well, mm -hmm. I was in Dallas. I didn't really have any friends. I just moved there. I just graduated college. And I didn't have anyone else to really, I didn't have friends. I didn't talk to anybody. So I felt like TikTok was my place to be just myself, be open, be vibrant. Yeah. And people just kind of attract to you and you make, you build your community. So I, that's why I was curious to know, do you think if you had not lived in Hawaii and you were not alone and having that time for just you, that you would have still taken that journey and taken that step to build your platform on YouTube? YouTubers in the beauty space that started at that time, like around the time frame, I would even say not just 09, but I would say like 09 to like 2015 era okay. YouTubers that started at that time frame. We all have something in common. We were either marginalized in some way mm -hmm. or we were going through like depression or poverty or something, something. you know, like we all have something in common and I think for us turning on the computer is like, I can be who I want. Right. Like uh -huh. people weren't as psychotic as they are now. So it was like a people, little bit more pure, you I, know? I feel like people were a lot meaner then, no? Would no. You, oh, really? Oh no. Because I remember no, I would see not things, like this. No. And pe no. People would say things like, Oh, I hope you die, kill yourself. Like I used to see No, they still do that hear, now. <laughs> well, yes. But I feel like at a time where influencing wasn't really a thing, it was something new. That is something that could have gotten to you, you know? Oh, yeah. There was definitely mean comments, but it was different in that, okay, you know what I think the difference is? I think now people are more irrational. Like, okay. you'll get a kill yourself comment for a negative review. It's like, I just, <laughs> like, the stand accounts. It's like, but, yeah. this was, I, I'm glad you love that artist, but like, they launched a perfume and the, I'm gonna give the tea whether you like it or not. Right. So, but back then, maybe like they would just say that just to say, say it, like it. just to be mean. But now it's like there's like n there's like no gray area. And I feel like that's why people gravitated to you because you did give those honest reviews. And also, yeah. you were honestly, you correct me if I'm wrong. You were kind of one of one in for like black and brown women definitely not the only one okay but you know the way these algorithms work they make it like damn near impossible for mm. you to find people at least at that time because like uh, people weren't like search engine savvy the way mm -hmm. that they are now so at that time if you wanted to find tutorials for like brown girls dark skin you would have to type that in, in the search. search that's kind of still how it is like when, it when is you're but looking, not as much not as much yeah, yeah but back then it was way more like the algorithm gave you the default. The default was pretty much white Asian, white Asian, that's it. Like even if you wanted to find a dark skinned Asian, you would have to like specify South Asian or this specifically. To go back to your question, being one of one, definitely not. Cause okay. there was even like channels that I loved at that time 
with other black girls, other brown girls that like I absolutely adored watching, but I would find them because I was kind of somewhat search savvy. Searching. And yeah. also sometimes I would like see them in my comments or I would like uh, see them in like the search recommendations just because I was interacting with that content too. Right. So it was just hard. Like we was just all oh, yeah. trying to make it to people's explore pages. And what's so beautiful about that time period that I love is there was really no expectation with it. You didn't know what None. was going to happen. You know, now I feel like with influencing, it's, oh, I want the brand deals. I want this. I want that. Then it was, I'm just making this content. And if you love it, you love it. If you don't, you don't. But as you continue to move throughout that journey of content creation, when did you finally realize that I can do this? I'm going to be good at this. When, what was that moment for you? So it was more, it was less, it was less that for me. Okay. Like, oh, I can go for this. I'm gonna, I believe in myself. It was more like, okay, girl, like, it's been half a decade. Like, <laughs> I gave myself an ultimatum. I was like, I've put too much into this to continue to basically not make livable money. So right. for the first five years, I was just kind of vibing. Like, right. no strategy, mm -hmm. no posting schedule. I really should have had one. I really should have been like even more on my Zoom. But mm -hmm. I wasn't, I was just like not really being serious. I wasn't looking at the bigger picture. Also like, but, I didn't have the forethought of knowing where social media was going, going yeah. at that time. So I think had I known, no, this is gonna really Be blow something. for people in general, not just me. I think I would have been more on diligent it. in the beginning. But it was like, yeah, like year four, year five, I was like, this is fun. I love what I have accomplished, but like I've been doing this for four years. I haven't even hit a hundred thousand subscribers yet. Like, mm -hmm. what am I what am I doing with this? Yeah. This costs money to maintain. Makeup costs money, equipment costs money, lights cost money. money. And you one thing about your content that I think everybody loves is it's very curated. Oh, Especially the, the, in a the time, lighting, honey. yeah, it's it's on point. But you know what? Because black creators in beauty, like I don't have the privilege of just yeah, giving you, you front face. We always camera. have to be always. top of the line. Always. It has to be, yeah. It is not. It's not. It's, the not, same. it's not. I don't do that for fun. Like mm -hmm. I would love to just use whatever ring light. No, girl. Yeah. Like ring lights will make me look gray. Mm -hmm. Like I had to go to Sammy's camera, give me some little airy lights. I literally have them lights that they be using on movie sets. Oh, wow. In my office. But hey, those are those are great investments to have. Oh, they're and, amazing. I mean, it, the work really speaks for itself. Thank you. Shout out to my girl, Alyssa Ashley. <laughs> oh, everything tech, oh my everything goodness. Everything tech I has be, come from Alyssa Ashley's she, recommendation. Yeah. Okay, let me she tell you She be on it with those cameras. Yes, because YouTube don't be teaching that stuff. <laughs> yeah. And you know, like, again, even with tech specifically, like lighting, for example, if I'm watching a tutorial and it's like somebody who's like 10 shades lighter than me, I'm like, that looks amazing on them, but I need to see how that photographs or films with oh, me yeah. in it. Hmm. So like, even when I go look for a review for something tech related, it's still kind of hit or miss. Cause I'm like, I don't even know if that's gonna, it's gonna work for you. Yeah. Like, wow. so whenever I need something like a little bit more catered to me, I go to somebody who like Who's knows what they're talking about or can at least give me advice to, you know, factor in me. The chocolate girl. <laughs> yeah, people don't always get to really understand how to curate the content, how to mm -hmm. do all the work themselves. It's you post one day, the next day you have a big team and everybody's. So I'm like, those five years probably helped you. The best thing. Yeah. DeAndre, the best thing mm -hmm. that's ever happened to me was not blowing up immediately. I'm a very like, okay, if this is not happening, that means something's missing. That means something's mm, wrong. So okay. what is wrong? So I'm looking at all my content and I'm like, you've been doing this for five years. There has to be a reason why it hasn't blown up. And in that moment, as I'm rewatching my old content, it clicked for me that when I would edit my own videos, I would edit them and post, edit them and post. Okay. And then when I was rewatching my own content, I was like, this is freaking boring. Like, mm. this is boring. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know why. Like, the good thing is, is I was good at teaching makeup. Right. But the content just wasn't enjoyable. Yeah. So then I'm asking myself, okay, why is the content not enjoyable? The content is not enjoyable because when you film a video, Jackie, everything that could make a video enjoyable, Jackie, you edit out. You edit. Because mm. you're too scared to really be yourself on That's camera. It. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay. Why am I scared to be myself on camera? Is it like 
I don't want to be embarrassed. Is it the whole like, you know, is it is it a pride thing? Mm -hmm. So then I was just like, maybe I should just like not edit the fun stuff out. Like, why don't I just try Leave that? You know, yeah, or yeah. let me or or why don't I just like the way that I act offline when I'm not teaching makeup, like, let me find a way to like do both. Like actually show my real personality while I'm teaching people how to do, do stuff. something. Right. Once it clicked for me. Six months later, I was like, okay, like it's New Year's Eve. I want to do something fun. Like I never have fun on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I want to do something fun. I want to do a parody video. I want to like make fun of like makeup trends. Mm -hmm. And so I did this. It was so stupid. Like even if I think about it, it makes me laugh because it was so stupid. It was like a parody video, and I used it was a. I made it into a series, but it was called Trends Were Ditching. Like in 2014 or 2015, okay. whatever. So I filmed it and I was just like wearing 20 millimeter lashes, like doing the absolute most. most. <laughs> and then I was filming it and I was like, I don't know, this is not a good idea. Like I, my stomach was just like, I don't know. Like, I, I just don't like this. Like, this yeah. is weird. I'm like, this is really embarrassing. Like I was already embarrassed about putting myself on YouTube, mm -hmm. but now this is even more embarrassing. But I was like, it's too late. You already filmed the girl. Like just put it up. And then on average, I would maybe get like 10,000 views in a month on a video, okay. maybe 20K, you know. And I woke up the next day and it had 50,000 views. Isn't that crazy though? Like when you go, you'll go to sleep not knowing and you wake no, up no, and you're no. like, But it wait. scared me. It scared no. me. Because I had no, at that time, I was like, oh, like I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it to blow up, but I was like, I was actually expecting to wake up to me getting like dragged. Okay. Cause I was, I was kind of harsh. <laughs> I was a little harsh. I was a little harsh. I was definitely. Is it like, still up? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Was, okay. I have to go look. It at probably it. has like, I mean, I don't know how many millions of views now, but I woke up and it had fifty thousand, like twenty thousand, fifty thousand. So like, I basically got overnight what I normally get on a mm, video a, in, a, in like a month. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I'm like, I'm panicking because I'm like. Shoot, I know they dra I know they're dragging me. Like, mm. I was like scared. But then I go and look in the comments, they're and they're laughing. like living for yeah, it. Yeah. And I was like, oh okay, like, okay, I good. Whew. I didn't upset anybody. <laughs> and then it was like a domino effect. The next day, it was at like two hundred thousand. The next, mm. day, it just kept growing mm. and growing. And then like media outlets were picking it up, and it went viral, mm. viral, viral. Like even for that year standards, because that would have been like twenty fifteen. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, oh, I just had to be funny. Yeah. Like, that's all I had to do. I just had to be funny. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm already funny. Like, that's easy. So and that's I'm, what I love. I, I loved how recently I saw your video about the creator who was like, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Who? The one that you you made a video on TikTok about. And you were like, girl, don't quit. Oh, yes. So, and yes. I, I love that. Like, even hearing this background more about it, it, it makes that story so much more powerful because you did, it did take time to get to the place you're at. Yeah. And I think we live in a society now where we always expect overnight success. Everything happens overnight. And I love how you continue to give back to the up and coming and rising influencers. Um, and I think we all appreciate it. Cause I even remember when you first followed me, I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like, this had to be a mistake. Like that's literally what I said, like, this is a mistake. Like. She did not mean to follow me. Have you ever accidentally followed somebody? I have. That is so funny. And that's why I thought maybe it was an accident. I'm like, there's no way she just followed me. No, but, I live for it. So that's why I'm, I love that you continue to, you know, help out the other creators. And I don't know, I thought that was super impactful. Somebody tells me that they're on the verge of giving up and I know, oh, just, just give it one more try. You started in the beauty space. Mm -hmm. And you did do a phenomenal transition into more lifestyle. How was that transition? Was it hard? Did you see a huge decrease in like numbers? Mm -hmm. uh, what inspired the transition? A lot was happening okay. when I decided to go into the lifestyle category because you know, I've, I've been an influencer since the word existed right. and I've seen like what happens when like, you know, other people try to pivot and sometimes it doesn't, doesn't work. work. Actually, sometimes it backfires. So I was nervous and of course, like rightfully apprehensive. Like what mm -hmm. if people are like, what the heck? <laughs> but I think because I had been doing it for so long that like people are either going to love it or hate it. And if they yeah. love it, great, obviously. And if some people hate it, then just let it ride 
But for me, I just feel like as long as the content's good, people are going to find you. Because like I said, at that point, I've already built up that muscle. Like I've already done this before. Mm -hmm. So you just follow what your audience is telling you and yeah. how they're reacting to content. And even if they're reacting in smaller doses, as long as they're reacting and interacting in positive ways, keep doing it. It yeah. doesn't matter if like the masses are not seeing it or if it's not immediately taking off or going viral, just keep doing it. I promise you, you're you good. It. Like, did yours, was going. yours like immediate or was did yours take time? It is a transition. But it's kind of in the same, I would like to say, maybe, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I kind of think it's in the same realm in a sense, no? Not quite. No. <laughs> I, okay, so I have like a bit of a hot take on this one. Okay. But I'll get into the transition and, and why I decided to start my my lifestyle platform in the first place. So it was like post COVID, it was 2020, and it was when a lot of content creators were like burnt out because mm. you would post something and you would get like dragged, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or it was like, mm, not right now, girl, like we're at home, which is fair, you know what I mean? Like people can't really use the content. So. At that time, I was kind of like soul searching, like trying to find my vibe. And then that was really when like I started to see other people on like Clean Talk and mm -hmm. the home decor girlies. And I'm like, this is all the stuff home. I do at home, home offline. I was like, I'm kind of here for that. I like that. And then also like my life now is wildly different to my life when I first started. I didn't have no money when I first started. Mm -hmm. And now I can afford to shop luxury. And there's a, a very, at that time, it was like a super really small niche black girl in luxury Space. category. Yeah. I don't even like calling it a name because it's like these, these are people who just exist. This, like, right. It's not a movement. It's not a, it's, whatever, it's nothing like, new. Like, it's nothing new. Yeah. Like we just don't see, see it. it. So then I was like, I want to be able to like unbox stuff Some from stuff. Louis and like, just for fun, not like in a liquid uh, yeah, yeah. Like just for fun, like that's what I got. You're gonna probably see it one way or another. Mother, right. So I, I was like, I wanna combine all of these things that I like doing now, mm -hmm. but I don't know how to. So then I was like, well just start and just see where it goes. And then I do feel like it was a little bit of a like slow burn for me mm -hmm. and I realized the same thing that I experienced on YouTube is kind of the same thing that I started experiencing on TikTok and Instagram and that this is where my hot take comes in. Okay. I feel like you grow faster when you're like funny or when you're like You do. kind of anti-black. Like when you're like cr doing some off the wall crazy stuff that like caters to like a specific oh, I see demographic. Saying a specific yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I feel like that's like the easiest way. So then it's like you have like these women who are like prim and proper and cleaning their house and da da da. I feel like they're not really, I guess they're not. And I'm not talking about the audiences. I'm I'm talking about like what the what these platforms like to promote. promote. You can't just be like normal, if that makes sense. Well, you can't be chill. You can't, you, um, you as a black As girl, a black, okay, yeah, yeah. Be, as a black you person, can't be, you can't. You can't like boring. No. Like you have to kind of be doing something, something off the wall off, or yeah. something really flamboyant or extra. Like yeah. I don't, they don't really let you be like, Chill. I think that's for even like being black and gay. It's the same for us too. Like we have to be funny, or I can see that. You know, it has to be something like that. I can't just make a video. Hey, you all, I'm making an espresso martini. You know, it has to be an espresso martini. Yeah. At least you know. You gotta be kind of wired. wired. You gotta be kind of like energetic, and that's fine. That's my personality. That's what anyway. I was saying. I think that helps because it is authentically who we are. For sure. Yeah. But it was definitely like a oh okay so like ASMR style for example like. That kind of content took a while for, for it to like really pick up for me because I felt like if I'm not on camera and if I'm not talking and if I'm not like wowing people in in another way, it wasn't really picking up. Yeah. So, but I kind of just ignored it and just was like, okay, well, you know, the and, girls who get it will get it and, and I they'll think, come eventually. And I think when you are posting other content that is more you talking, more personality, when you throw in like an ASMR video, they'll just watch it because they see the other stuff that you do anyways, right? right? Sometimes, but you know, also like, you know, TikTok, like <sighs> TikTok is just one example of this, but like once you become known for something, yeah, they expect you to keep doing only that. So you have to be really careful to not, that what you're talking about works really well on other platforms. Uh, platforms. I can wow you in on YouTube and then be like, let's test this now. And then it might work, but 
they're more likely to watch it because they see your name pop up on mm-hmm. TikTok. It doesn't really well, work you, the same. I, I would agree with that point, but here's my hot take on it. Okay. I like to use it as myself as kind of a case study. Mm-hmm. So when I started, I was doing just Gen Z in the workforce videos. Yes. Like slamming the laptop, all of that. <laughs> and I had decided I didn't want to be that person because I see a lot of other creators and they're grouped only as that. Like you're only doing those comic videos. Yeah. And that's why I kind of started doing other things and they started picking up traction. And I believe, I could be wrong, but it's my belief that those things only picked up because people were already coming to me for that Gen Z in the workforce content. And it's like, they wanted to know more about me. That's because the content was good. <laughs> I guess. That's because the content's actually good. Okay. And most well, people you. don't want to admit like, Maybe we need to rewrite the script, script a little bit. You know what I mean? Because they think, oh, I can only do this now because it's that's my bread and butter. Mm-hmm. That does happen. But the stuff that you're easing people into either isn't adjacent enough for them to care mm. or it's just not good okay. or both. Because I think, I, like, for me, I, I want to hear your feedback on this mm-hmm. as somebody who has seen this in other spaces. Because yes. I, I didn't go on YouTube. That was just... It's too many buttons and analytics. It's just, YouTube is just a lot. I love YouTube. I still love YouTube. It's just so, and then editing is another thing. I just hate editing. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, but you're a beast at it. And I'm sure you edit all your stuff. Not anymore, no. Really? Hell no. Nah. You don't edit your videos? Hell, on you? No. Well, not you. I'm talking about like TikTok and stuff. Oh, like, okay, so I do some of the short form stuff, yes. Okay. But now I'm I have, like, like, an editor. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, they really know you, your editor is killing it because they really understand your style. Because even your edits come off as, I, every time I see your edits, I'm like, oh, Jackie, she edited this. Thank you. So they, they're eating. Thank Shout you. out to them. Yes. <laughs> do you think that the candle would have been as successful if you were still just only doing beauty with? Because I don't. Yeah, I, I do. Okay. Because it was, when we launched, it was scary. It was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was too, it was like. Whoa, we were prepared. You sold not like, prepared. what, 20,000? That was, yeah, that was supposed to be like six months worth of inventory. Oh, wow. And it yeah. was gone in two hours. Gone in like two hours. That's so good. And Not always. <laughs> well, I mean, it's probably <laughs> a lot. And, yeah, yeah. It's a nightmare a lot, yeah, for yeah. a small business. But yeah, I mean, it's for sure like, okay, like the girls are ready to believe They're me. ready they to. Were, they believe in me. Like, I, I, I was here for it in, in that aspect. But, mm-hmm. you know, like. That was the year when like everybody was like losing packages and stuff mm. and like you would order something no tracking number would pop up and that was like stuff that we had zero control, control. over so like imagine that's your first year of business and there's so many other factors that like don't even have nothing, nothing to do, do with, with you it. they're gonna reach out to the person they have a contact with they ain't gonna call dh sometimes they might you know mm-hmm. but yeah, Cause I think that crazy. was that's even my fear when it comes to launching something is I'm afraid of I'm just terrified. Okay, I don't mind when people backlash or have negative things to say about me online. Right. But when someone talk about your baby, that's so different. Like this, like Forever be. Mood is your baby. It is, but you know what? I'm I'm actually pretty good at separating. Mm. Because at the end of the day, if someone bought that, oh no no no, we need to get it together. Like. That's not personal at all. Okay. That's somebody's money. Money. Right, right. So you and I know how it feels to not have, have it. it. So okay. let's get it together. So you take you know? all, even if it's negative feedback, you you do a good job at. Well, like keep it cute, but well, like yeah. don't be like so like awful. Right, you know? right. Don't make a personal jab at me or mm-hmm. Dennis, our co-founder. <laughs> but if somebody's like really angry, I'm just like it's fine. Like just it's fine. fine. We'll, we'll figure it out. But also, I don't. I also don't handle customer service. In the rare event that like somebody messages me, I always make sure it gets taken care of okay. as soon as, as possible. As possible, yeah. And I just try to like keep it professional when it comes to stuff like that because I've, as a as a consumer and also as a reviewer myself, mm-hmm. I've seen how not good of a look it is. Like when a founder goes off the rails over something really minuscule, yeah. and I'm like. I don't ever want to be like that. Do you, you think you've learned business though more since starting throughout yeah. the process? Like it was a learn as you go type of thing. Um, it was it was definitely both. I learn a lot every day as a brand co-founder. Okay. But I try to stay out of the weeds of the day to day because I also feel like when you're creative, I, sometimes I feel like the more the wires get crossed, mm. the more it can kind of convolute the process in a way. So. 
I let, and also when your business partners and also like lovers, mm -hmm. like sometimes I feel like if you overstep, then it becomes like, oh, so you don't really like trust, trust me. me. Okay. He doesn't say that, but I kind of feel like, well, you wouldn't go into business with somebody, somebody if you didn't trust, trust that they got it right? right. And I feel like that's why it works so well because like, I'm good with what I'm good at. He's good at what he's good at. And we don't try to like, no, I'm going to do this. And also like the times where it is like, oh no, like I feel like we need to make this decision. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, let's explain why. Like, you know, I want to know why. Cause he may want to learn something as well. Mm -hmm. And then if he understands and agrees, I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I'm not going to lie. Whenever somebody asks me for advice about like starting a business with their partner, I just told them the straight up truth. If you're expecting what we have, just know it's, it's not. not the norm. Mm -hmm. So don't get too like excited. And that's no shade. It's totally mm -hmm. possible. But what we have is really rare because we don't overstep each other. It's so like, like he lets me be the expert at what I'm good at. I let him and it just works. Would you say you're more of the marketing of it? Definitely. Okay. I mean, I, I've, I've helped. Like we have a social media person on our team. I have a creative director. So we have ideas coming. <laughs> yes, that last, last drop, story. honey. And that's where you should. taste all the cinnamon in the last oh, little. Oh, well, let me go ahead. Oh, it's getting dark. It's getting... <laughs> I do see the cinnamon. Cinnamon I'm, at the I'm bottom. Gonna get, I'm going to get there. Pretty much most of like the big decisions come from me. Like actually today I'm about to post like something, something big, exciting. something really exciting. I'm so nervous, but it's like, it was like my creative idea, I guess you can mm -hmm. say. So I'm really excited, but sometimes things come from my creative director mm -hmm. and she, I let her lead and I'm like, okay, cool. I give input where I think it's needed. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of bounce off of each other. I really feel like a good leader is someone who's like, I'm gonna. I'm going to always learn stuff. That's mm -hmm. so important because you can't just walk into a room thinking you know everything. Yeah. What if I knew? If I knew everything, I would be sitting at the same table as Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. Right. Not and they, that I would want to, but I'm just saying <laughs> I would be where they are. I'm not there, so I'm like, how can I move about mm -hmm. life thinking I know everything? I'm not even. What our brand is still fairly new. Like we're still considered a small business. I know people don't like hearing that word. A small business is not a negative term. Yeah. It's like literally like a legal, like the IRS considers you a small, small business, business if you make a certain amount of revenue, if you have a certain amount of employees. But I think because people see, oh, 2 million followers, honey, you're not you're a small, a small business. business. It's like, bit. no, that's not, we're, we're literally only in the US and Canada and on the continent of Africa. That's mm -hmm. it. We're not even, we haven't even scratched the surface of where we're about to be at. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just be willing to like learn and, and trust your team because it's important. Well, what would you say, so someone like me who wants to start their own business, I really am dying to start my own espresso martini like kind of can line, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And I'm just curious. Like ready to drink, ready to yeah, drink. Yeah, okay. like think of White Claws. Oh, White Claws, White Claws. yes. But espresso. No. Yes, like, yes, yes, you know. I know what you're talking about, yes. And I just want to know if you could like share mm -hmm. a checklist that you would give to me or anybody who's trying to start a small business mm -hmm. when going into it. So the first question that I would ask, is this a product I would make in general, even if it wasn't a business? Okay. That's the first thing. For me, I'm a fragrance girl through and yeah, through. Yeah, for sure. And when we started Forever Mood, we started with candles and I was like, I mean, if they not here for it, I will be burning these candles safe. By like, myself. We just gonna be, we gonna have a lifetime supply of candles. candles. Like, that's honestly good enough for me. I'm cool with yeah. it. Making money is so much fun, mm -hmm. especially as a Nigerian woman. We love money, money. <laughs> but it's honestly not enough. It's okay. not enough. I, I honestly feel like the passion i know people love being like that's so cliche but, but it's true everybody has a business and a startup and a fund and a vc and a something mm -hmm. what is who why do i care yeah, right tell me why should i care why should that why should i stop using the product that i already have to use yours so i think you have to ask yourself those questions mm -hmm. and then how is yours different mm. and i mean like in a no, for real, like what void are you filling? So how would you say Forever Mood is different than other candle brands? Okay, so there's a number of different, very specific pain points I wanted to address when we started Forever Mood. Uh -huh. One, when I started to become like a high income earner and I started buying like more higher end fragrance, more higher end candles, I started to notice a couple things. 
one, everything was designed really masculine, mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing. But I was like, I need pink. You know what I mean? Like, if it's if it's two hundred dollars, like, yeah. can I get like some pastels, something pretty, <laughs> like you know, kind of kind of girly? I don't know. Yeah. And then a I noticed, girl. yeah, like just something pretty. <laughs> like it doesn't gotta be like, it doesn't have Super to be kitschy. Um, yeah. yeah, but I just need something a little bit pretty. You yeah, know? Pre a little bit pretty, and I almost don't even want to say youthful. Like I just modern. That's what I was mm -hmm. looking for. I was like, some some stuff looks either dated, really masculine, or like not current. So that was like the one thing that kind of bothered me. And even though, yeah, the look doesn't affect the performance, people do shop with their eyes. So the way that a brand looks does matter. So that was the first thing. Then the second thing, you have the high end, you have the low end, very few price points that were set in between, like mastige, we use that term a lot. Like there's mass, which is like drugstore. Okay. There's prestige, which is luxury. So mastige mm, is like, like a good it's, between. It, it's right in between. And they use that term a lot in like beauty, like Sephora's and Ulta's like mastige because there's brands that are like right in the middle. Mm -hmm. There was nothing like that for fragrance. So I was mm. like, okay, like I need something that's kind of like right in the middle, like not too cheap, not too expensive. And I noticed that like the lower end home fragrance brands didn't have quality enough like fragrance in them so like the throw would be like really great but it would be like too simple of a scent and mm -hmm. I'm like it smells like whatever like I just smell apricot like I need something a little bit more elevated right okay. and then I noticed that the really bougie candles were complex and amazing and they smelled really really unique but then I couldn't get it to like like, like I couldn't smell it outside of like a five foot radius. You know what I mean? So I was like, uh, the stuff that's too expensive is weak. And then the stuff that's really cheap is strong, just, but like not quality and unique enough. Right. So I was like, again, I want something that's gonna combine both and also look pretty. And then because we started the brand, we really pushed forward with starting the brand in the pandemic. I also knew I really wanted to center like black women being taken care of at the forefront because mm -hmm. that's something that I didn't really see a lot. And I just think with everything that was going on socially, politically in 2020, yeah, we like that. I personally, I needed like a, a break. Like, yeah. and I was just really intentional about who I wanted to show being like taken care of whenever mm. I posted the content because mm. I just didn't see it. I yeah. just, I just, I just kind of, Honestly, I just kind of had enough. I, I, I felt like it was at a time where I felt like every time something happens, people are like, black women, get up and go work. Go fix yeah. this. Go do this. And it's like, why are we always giving marching orders? Like, it just became too much. So those were all of the things that I wanted to combine. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize it. I, honestly, I didn't realize it was going to take off the way that it did. I thought it was going to be a passion project. I think fragrance is a saturated market, but you were, you found a way to find something unique, but mm -hmm. still reach a huge demographic that's not really touched and talk about a lot. Yeah. And I think that co that contributes to why you were able to sell out in those two hours. Uh, of course, your name alone was... It helps. It helps. It definitely gives but, a boost. But that's not... But that's... I feel like a name alone is just not enough. No. That's it's why I didn't enough. use my name. Yeah. I wasn't even interested. I was like, I want people to go up to the shelves and be like, oh, Forever Moo, what's that? Let me yeah. try that. Smell it and just smell the product. Just do you like the product? Right. Who, forget who made it. Do, do you, you like, like it? the product? Speaking of going up to the shelves, you're in Sephora, which yes. is yes. Shout it, out to Sephora. Sephora. We love Sephora. <laughs> like, how did that come about? They just reached out to you. Did you have prior communication with Sephora? Yes. Okay. So yeah. You... So they okay. So Sephora actually reached out to me like two years before we launched Forever Mood because I was working on another project that they was not supposed to know about. And that's the thing, people in the industry talk too damn much. They talk, okay. <laughs> but they heard about something, I was cooking, mm -hmm. and they were like, we wanna work with Jackie. And so we presented them something and they were super excited, but that ended up getting shelved. And then when we launched Forever Mood, they were like, you didn't tell us you were doing this. We, we, mm. we wanna meet you again. Like, okay. what, what, what is this, what is this? And then at that time, that was when, you know, like the home fragrance category was because everyone growing. was home too. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was It was growing. It was growing for Sephora. So they reached out and we pretty much picked up where we left off. But then we ultimately decided that because we had just started, it was like logistically like not feasible for us to be able to keep up with what they were requiring. Mm. So then we had to tell them no. And then like, of course, let's revisit in the future. Because like the Forever Mood customer and the, the Sephora customer were like, it's pretty much the same. same. 
same demographic, younger, um, well-established working consumers who mm-hmm. are like not necessarily fresh out of college. Like, right. you know, my audience was like in that 18 to 35 age right. gap, which like they're, they're spending money. Like right. they're, they have jobs, they have careers, they have income. So with Sephora, same thing, probably a little bit of a wider age gap, but they, you know, it just made sense. Right. And so, yeah, we, we revisited the conversation like six months later and then mm. we did it and we launched it and they've been like, incredible Mm because they want their brands to do well it's very apparent that they want their brands to do well so they don't just like throw you on shelves and like lead you to the wolf show like they you know because i see you sometimes you'll go to sephora stores and i don't know if those are activations you're doing where you'll go when sephora's have candle they'll they'll do something with their candle event yeah yeah sometimes they they try to keep like all of their in-store brands in the loop mm. for like it's like a family yeah it's but it's also a really kind of cool way to network right. because mm. when there's like for example like other black founders they always are like hey we want to do this for our black founders mm. we want to connect you guys and like if it's a brand or a founder you love that's like your automatic way into like meeting that person got it maybe potentially working with Together. them in the future so i mean yeah, and it, and it totally feels authentic. It never at any point felt like Sephora was pandering or mm-hmm. trying to like bite onto the black dollar. Like it really feels intentional and mm-hmm. I feel like that's really important, important because if I at any point felt like, mm, no, this feels like cash grabby, like it just kind of feels like they're riding the wave, I wouldn't have been interested. So when you first went into starting a candle and creating a candle, your goal was never, I want to be in Sephora. To be fair though, we would have eventually had to have like an in-person retailer at some point because it, it is fragrance. Yeah. And I want people to come up to the product and smell it and interact with it before they buy it because mm-hmm. you can't do that when you're just D to C. So, but yeah, but I wasn't thinking like, this is the one thing, you know what I mean? Like, I, I guess I just wasn't thinking that far ahead. Okay. I don't know. But to be fair though, if the goal was any place duh it'll be Sephora. Oh, absolutely absolutely yeah. that's no, why that's I spent perfect. the most time like that's that was perfect the, the alignment. VIP points I got was crazy <laughs> like it, it would have absolutely been Sephora but mm. I was more so thinking like my taste belongs in like this region you know mm. what I mean like I want us to really have a strong presence in this country like right. I was thinking more that vibe okay if that makes sense that's that does make sense yeah um and I want to ask you when we were when I when we when I saw you at the TikTok event, I, I didn't know this at the time that your candles that's one of the top selling black brands on TikTok. Did you know that? No, nobody that's told they, me that. That's why did you th- there was like a booth outside of the event and it had all the top selling black no. brands on TikTok. Wow, and your candle was on the booth. And they were saying that was why. That was what the booth was for, all the top oh, selling black brands. Oh, damn, TikTok, y'all didn't tell me that. <laughs> so, no, I didn't know that. But, That's amazing. But with that, mm-hmm. how do you, with the TikTok ban happening and things oh like that, do you think that that will affect like business in that realm when it comes to buying on TikTok shops. I know that's a new thing. Yeah. Um, and I know that there's a huge conversation about, oh, it may affect small businesses. Yeah. Um, a lot of our sales come like D to C. So people are buying directly from us. And for the people watching, explain what D to C is. Direct to consumer. Okay. So they're shopping on our website and they're buying directly from the brand as opposed to like a third party retailer, like a Sephora. Mm-hmm. And so that's actually, that's which is also really rare. The majority of our like customer sales come directly to us. So that's mm-hmm. like a really good, good position to be in because we don't have to split a commission with anybody. They're coming directly to yes. us. We also have more variety. So it could be that as well. And then it's Sephora and then like other like TikTok shop initiatives. Mm-hmm. And then we also just recently launched in Beauty Hut Africa, which I'm so excited about because. Okay. Explain the, to me what Beauty Hut Africa Beauty, is. Beauty Hut Africa is a retailer in Nigeria. Okay. And okay. so, yeah, so Your that was our town. first international, like, outside of Canada, like, okay. that was like our first big international launch. And I just kind of feel like, you know, most times people are like, oh, we're now in the UK, we're now in Australia, but like, no, we hit the continent we first. The, like, right. that was like a big deal to me. Yeah. So that was really exciting. Um, but that's like a very new partnership. So uh-huh. with the TikTok ban happening, I mean, I'm definitely like, I don't want to see anybody have to struggle or start over. Yeah. Because, you know, struggling is not fun. Yeah. And I don't like people 
you know, being like, oh, now you content creators are gonna have to find a job now. Like yeah. that's not fun. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? Like it's not just gonna. It's gonna definitely have a domino effect if it does end up going down the way that people, you know, the the worst case scenario. It will one thousand percent affect small businesses, and I you, that sucks. Like and I don't want to see that. And that's what I think. I like when I see it all. I'm not really worried when it comes to like myself or other creators, mm -hmm. I'm more worried about those small businesses that have made a living simply yeah. off of TikTok shops. Cause I see that on like my For You page all the time and people saying, oh, well I'm only surviving in things because TikTok shops and wow. it has been significant for my business. And it just, it sucks to see that go away for people. It does suck to see, but I think if you've, if you've been able to like build a big, like, customer base and a big following from that and that alone, you're in a fairly good position Thanks. because naturally if people are expecting, okay, I can no longer buy this product here, you can at least migrate direct them, them on. Yeah, you can else. at least direct yeah, them yeah. to somewhere else. So like even it would probably, you probably would take some hits, but mm -hmm. at least you have that and you can start, you know, getting the message out now. If anything, maybe even shut down your shop now. So that it's not a so it's not right. Hey, I took down my shop. I'm now Only link in bio. <laughs> get them ready now. Like just yeah. you never so they know. Get them ready now. And you know, I think that it's good that people have time because even yeah. there's things like when you say, I'm, what is it called? Like email marketing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That's things people, small businesses, can work on taking advantage of. That's true. Too. Yeah, have a mailing list. Yeah. That's amazing. You can talk directly to your customers mm -hmm. you ain't got to worry about no algorithm like you can literally and people opt in so you know so you don't handle like the mailing list or any of uh, those things oh, you know? <laughs> a post and go and okay go. i'm here for vibes i'm here for the comments okay, okay. I'm, i want to be with the group like i want to chat with people with the, okay but yeah we do have like an email like a mailing list and we have like a pretty sizable mailing list like people we have a community on a platform called Geneva. I don't know if you've heard okay. of Geneva. Like mm -mm. a lot of like brands are on Geneva, okay. but basically like, okay, you know how some people do like the Facebook groups? Yes. The, yes, the yes, private yes, yes, groups. Yes. Mm -hmm. Geneva is like that, but okay. it's on Geneva. So we also have like a fragrance subscription. It's like a quarterly subscription where we come up with like two cents that are like limited edition. Mm -hmm. And then you get them every quarter. You pay like a quarterly like fee. fee. Exactly. And so everybody that's in the, it's called the self-care club. Everybody that's in self-care club also gets access to our private Geneva group. Okay. So when we launch stuff, like we give them first access, whenever we just do fun stuff. Like when we were in Washington DC, me and Dennis were in Washington DC, like maybe six months ago. And we were like, hey, if anybody's in DC, like come meet up and hang out with us. Like we're gonna be at this location. And like a couple of the, of the local, they like people that lived in the, what they, DMV, what they DMV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, like a couple of people that were, happened to be in the area, like came through and it was just like fun. It was That's really so cute. That's so beautiful because it's, you're creating, you already have this huge community on social media across yeah. all your platforms, which kudos to that. Cause crossing isn't always the easiest. Yeah, but muscle. Yeah, you're right. Muscle. You're right. Your girl, your girl's been uh, training, honey. <laughs> For years, right? <laughs> uh, but that's so beautiful that not only do you already have such a huge community from just yourself, but you're also building and continuing to build a huge community with the brand mm -hmm. alone, and not intertwining them. Yeah. Which I don't know. It's I mean we all know it's your brand, but it doesn't just from our conversation. It doesn't feel like there's inner really any intermingling when it comes to how the business is ran. Yeah. And I think that for creators who are looking to pivot out of just content creation and start their own product, mm -hmm. um, that's super important. Yeah. And that's something that I'm even taking away from this now. Like, okay, maybe not make, when I do decide to create my product, not put, cause I'm, when I, at first when I was thinking, I was like, I'll put my face on the can and I'll do all that. And it's like, though. that's, but that's. <laughs> it would be cute though, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I mean, it would, but then it's like, where's the longevity there? Yeah. You know, cause your product will live on even if you decide one day, and I wanted to hear about that, your future of influencing. But if you decided one day, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Me and Dennis are just going to chill and enjoy the fruits of our labor. We have our business running itself at this point. Right. You can do that. It's not the whole business is going to shut down because you're no longer kind of the face of it. Yeah. And that's beautiful. 
and that's I, intentional. Okay. Very it's, intentional. Can you ex are you okay to explain the intention behind that? Yeah. Oh, okay. of course, because you know I'm sure some of the viewers are, are aspiring entrepreneurs themselves, yeah. and maybe they want to start businesses. I'm really big on like, what are other people doing? And I don't want to do that. Mm, so, okay. you know, there are some other influencers that many of you would consider my peers, but I don't. <laughs> but I'm looking at some of the mistakes they've made and I'm like, mm. oh, no, thank you. So like brands that are like led by the person, like it's fully focused on the person it's named after the person yeah the moment they don't like you which tomorrow they won't like you mm -hmm. you know because that's just how that works your brand and you go hand in mm -hmm. hand for me i centered my community and my brand it was always about like how are black people in general how are they being viewed how are they being taken care of what do we smell like that is what mattered to me not me the easy route would have been just using my name mm. and just having me in every single campaign, yeah. but I kind of didn't want to take the easy route because again, your girl's a muscle, she's a trained expert. <laughs> and I was really more so like, no, I'm actually like, okay with like not naming it after me. I wanted it to be about the product itself. Mm -hmm. And I don't want it to be as fickle as like when it's named after me. Right. You know, mm -hmm. even after you like sell a brand, if you want to sell your brand, and you're no longer associated with it, again, some of my... Because we've seen that actually with, I mean, we don't have to name drop or anything, but we've seen that where they've sold a brand and the brand's like, never mind. Exactly. Because their name was so attached to the brand. Right. Yeah. Their peers, but not really my peers, when they <laughs> get into mess or whatever, like, I don't want to, mm -mm, I don't want nothing, I don't want nothing to do with that. Yeah. So the thing is, is like, it's a fine line. So it should obviously be connected to me. Right, right, right. Clearly, like, hell yeah, like, I'm gonna pull up, I'm gonna go to a public appearance, I wanna meet customers, but I love people being like, I've been buying this candle for years, I didn't even know what you know was your, yeah. Period, like, like can oh. I tell you, you're, that's like my dream customer. Okay. Cause you fell in love with the product, like the product spoke for itself. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters to me. Right, would, you, would you ever like, cause we're talking and I'm like, would you ever consider doing a masterclass on business? Because you're you're really mean. I couldn't. You couldn't. Mm -mm, Cause I'd be like, that ain't it, ma. Like you might be offended though. But that's I'm very. What, but I'm that's very what people need because that's how we. <laughs> because that's how we actually make change. And when people are always so nice to us and saying things such as, "Oh, it's great," you know, that's not it's not honest. Yeah, and that's true. I think hearing that, I'm sure it wouldn't be nasty. It would be constructive criticism. No, never. Of yeah. course, of course. That's what a lot of people need, and. I think your wisdom in not only in the influencer space, but hearing from you more in this business space too, which I feel I don't really see a lot online. Mm -hmm. The business side of things is mind blowing. Oh, thank you. No, honestly, like I'm so inspired from this talk. Thank you. Um, I just feel like I have so much more to learn. Yeah. That's all. Because I'm not there. I'm not clearly where I really, really want to be. be. So maybe because it's not like I'm not as confident. Like I'm, you're saying this to me and I'm just mm -hmm. like, oh God, like every day I'm trying to figure out child, like what's, what's the what's next, next wave? You know what I mean? But I'm also really proud of that. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not the expert yet. I'm not the most successful entrepreneur. I don't yet. Necess I don't necessarily want to be. But I mean, how are we defining the success of it? Cause the success you know, nowadays, doesn't need to. If you doesn't... don't have a billion dollar valuation. Oh, but why do you. For yeah. I will take one hundred million dollars. <laughs> Please. I don't need a billion. Same. I don't care. I, That's a, I say that all the time. People are like, "Do you want to be a billionaire?" No, I'm like, no, no. Actually, I don't want to be a billionaire. I have much lower standards, actually. Yeah. Because you have to standards. exploit people for that. And I just don't. No, thank I'm you. Not interested in doing that. No, thanks. It's yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I'll take no. fifty million. You know, I'll take that. But what do you think? As we wrap up here, what do you think is next um, for just the influencing journey and also for Forever Move? Ooh. Because how many years are you in the game now? Ooh, my my 15th year as a content creator is this year. Mm. This August will be my 15th. That's crazy because that's like almost two decades. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't like, make it past a year. year <laughs> six months. Maybe I was just about now. to say maybe three months. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so year 15 as a creator, year four for Forever Mood. By the time this episode 
comes out. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm about to say it. We'll be launching into our biggest category since we launched, okay. which is perfume. Oh so my yeah. gosh, congratulations. I'm so, when I tell you, DeAndre, I'm so excited. I think I'm going to cry when I announce it. I, I was cry. I was always wondering were you gonna like pivot more into that. Because... It was always ever since like since the beginning of the brand. It was like yeah, eventually I want to mm. start with candles. I want to see how people respond to it and perfume perfume. It makes so down. like it I makes just so mean, much sense. I'm a per, I'm a perfume girl and I'm I'm just a fragrance girl in general. General. So like scent like body care body like I like fragrance. And you'll probably ones. end up doing all of that too, like the oh, body I... wash, the body butters. Yeah. So we are really big on like launching things in fours, mm -hmm. hence the term forever, forever. mood because uh -huh. it's forever a mood. It's almost like a one a one scent for every season or one scent hmm. for every personality. Okay. Because even before I launched the brand, I always knew I love home fragrance, but I'm always gonna. Perfume has always been like my That's heart and yeah, soul, yeah. right? And so, yeah, so when we started this project, we started this project with the perfume while on quarantine. Like, mm -hmm. I got my first set of perfume samples in 2020. Oh, so you've been... The, so the, this the has same, been in a... So basically, the same year we launched the brand was mm -hmm. the same year we started working on the perfume. You just didn't know. Like, Why does it take just, so long? Okay, there's a lot of different things that was happening. First okay. of all, like... Things cost money, and yeah. then we're self-funded. So we were funding ourselves, but then also trying to like activate other products. And mm, okay. when you're like your own investor, like things just take time. Yeah. Like, so, child, this I is, gotta, yeah. This is a, a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> I gotta pay for this. This costed <laughs> more money than I probably will ever share. Mm -hmm. A lot of freaking money. Well, it was so, well worth it. Oh, what? The <laughs> best freaking money ever spent. But we just had to, you know, pay for things slowly, and then also like testing samples being like love this change that love this change that hate that take that you know what i mean yeah. so basically it was just a four year project Possibly. like but it was worth it cuz i was because... just like it's just going to be more and more perfect but i i always carry them with me and i happen to have the one that i'm wearing today which is nda mm -hmm. also this is the one that i get the most compliments on okay um, you know, fragrance is very personal. So like your body chemistry will, your body will tell you like, mm -hmm. this one's my fave. Right, right. You know, how are people reacting to it? How are people like vibing with it? Mm -hmm. But this one has spiced rum notes. Okay. It has vanilla notes and it also has tobacco notes. So okay. it's kind of smoky, kind of sweet. I like to wear a little, little like little ballsy scents. More like a... <laughs> you gotta, you gotta like kind of have like a little like But you wear, but moment. I think just your style and how you wear matters a lot when it comes yes. to that too. What would you say outside of just that one? What what other other three? Yes. You? So they're all very different. Okay. The are all the bottles the same? Same shape, okay. different colors. Okay. So we went with purple for NDA because this is kind of like I would say my Jackie at night. Okay. Me in a nighttime scent. Like this Got is what it. I wear when I really want to like get people's attention. Mm -hmm. It's kind of sultry. Like I said, I like a little bit of like a ballsier scent. So mm -hmm. like there's some of that like, oh, is it feminine? Is it masculine? You know, like you don't really know which one which one it leans. It also depends on who's wearing, who's wearing it. it. Yeah. So like my fiance wears this one as well. It smells really good on him. But um <laughs> kind of seductive, a little dark. So that's yeah. why we went with like the purple. Then we have a bottle that's like this beautiful canary yellow. It looks like literally like a yellow diamond. Okay. And it's called hard to get, hard to get. Okay. And is that more daytime? Hard to get. Very daytime. Okay. She's very cottage core, like girl next door, okay. but she's like girl next door. Door, but like you gotta kind of work for it though. So she like so she's more floralish, floraly. It's, I would say. This is me guessing. She's actually has vanilla and citrus notes. That's like the simplest uh, way I can explain okay. it. So it's almost like you're kind of smelling. I don't want to say lemon pound cake, but there's something like yeah, there's something like gourmand about it, but mm -hmm. also like a little bit like a sparkly citrus top Got it. to it as well. Mm. And that's why we called it hard to get because she's th that addictive sweetness. Once you get it. But it's it. like, mm-mm. But once you no, have it, yeah. actually, I'm unavailable, <laughs> baby. Um, and I called it that because not everybody loves super sweet scents. Mm -hmm. So that was another one that I was like, Will you get it or will, will won't you? You, you? Yeah. you know what I mean? Like I kind of wanted it to not necessarily be for everybody. Mm -hmm. 
That was really intentional. I'm also really intentional on like. I, I, oh, I mean, I, the I whole was, episode we've seen, everything is completely Oh, yeah. oh intentional. the thought. Like, we built out like whole personality profiles for every single perfume mm. before we presented them. So to it's, fragrance it's houses. like its own little person. They're all Aww. people. Like, they're all personalities. She's the seductress. <laughs> Hard to get is like the the cottage core girl head in the clouds. She's the girl's next. She's the girl next door, but like you really kind of want to be her, and you have to kind of fight for her a little bit. Yeah. And then um, I am her mm -hmm. is really sort of kind of like the Sephora favorite. They feel like that's uh -huh. gonna be like our hero product. One. It's pink because I definitely needed something that's pink and fluffy like and me. Girly. Girl's girl. Girly girl. <laughs> girly girl. That one has. Oud notes. Okay. It does have oud. It has red velvet notes. It has pear and it has raspberry. So all of these things sound wildly different, but I could I would describe it as like I smell a lot of the pear and raspberry. That's what a lot of people smell, a lot of the pear and raspberry. But the longer you wear it, you start to get kind of like this, ooh, this darker, sultrier a little bit. Mm. Still a really, I would say really feminine, probably the most feminine out of all of our scents is I Am Her, that's hence the name, and the pink color. Got it. And then, oh, okay, so I Am Her is daytime, this is Jackie at night. Okay. Those two are the most me, NDA and I Am Her. Uh, okay. Um, and then the last one is You Remind Me, and it's like a clear diamond. Okay. And You Remind Me actually smells like a person and less mm. like a fragrance. So it's a skin scent. Ah, uh, so, so it picks up on your... It smells like body chemistry, and it's mm. a warm skin scent. Like just cashmere and like, oh, it just smells like warm, blanketed skin. But it doesn't smell like a floral note or like a gourmand or a woody it just smells like skin you know mm, what I mean? okay. so that's why we called it you remind me because it's like hmm, i've smelled this before but it's not a perfume i feel like this reminds me of somebody Someone. or something or some place that i've been well this has been so good and this is exciting and i'm as everyone else i'm sure is where we can't wait to see what else happens with forever mood and just with you as well and Thank your you. brand and what you've already built and I just want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, keep inspiring black and brown creators to just put their stuff out there to do what they really want to do. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I cannot wait to see this espresso martini. Yeah, we have to make like, it happen. So I'm looking forward to that. I may be hitting you up like, hey, can you help? I'm, I'm, I need a little, yeah. you know. Well, TikTok, Instagram, <laughs> YouTube. YouTube. Instagram Reels. Reels, yeah, yeah. Alrighty, well, well thank, thank you, you so much. Me. Absolutely. Thank you, this is awesome. This has been great, and we will see you all next time. Bye.